Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Such good things as surpass our understanding. So pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Re Revelation to John. In the spirit, the angel carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God the Almighty and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore. But the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And there will be no more night. They need no lamp, light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. There was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate there's a pool called in Hebrew Bethesda, which has five porticoes, and these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that it had been a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat and walk. And once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was a Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Because we have met together here today, life may grow greater for those who have lost faith in it, simpler for those who are confused by it, more secure for those who would escape it, happier for those who may be tasting the bitterness of it, safer for those who are feeling the peril of it, more friendly for those who are feeling the loneliness of it, and holier for all to whom life may have lost its dignity, its beauty, and its meaning. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This past Sunday at 5 p.m., we gathered in Dean Willie Hall for our monthly crowded table service to talk about diversity and equity and inclusion here at St. Paul's. In the large group and in the smaller groups, people shared their stories, sometimes painful, sometimes joyful. Stories were shared about the limitations of body and mind and spirit, and about the limitations of physical spaces, the limitations created by hardness of heart, and both the broad and specific limitations of just being human. We also shared the beauty and love that is experienced when limitations are honored and seen not as something that detracts from a person, but rather simply a piece of who we are as a whole. Last night I was honored to be the officiant at a wedding for cathedral members. After the ceremony, I stood in this small gathering of people from St. Paul's and was gifted the gesture of an offering of an adult beverage. I declined as I am intentionally sober. I have Crohn's disease and diagnosed anxiety and depression and alcohol. It just does bad things for all of that. <laughs> In just a few sentences, a fellow St. Pauli and I learned that we are medication buddies. We take the same medication. So for, you know, different autoimmune disease, and the question, what's wrong with you, brought us to a deeper knowing and understanding of each other. A connection was built through the ways in which our bodies just don't do what we would like for them to do. And today, 
Today we hear the story of one who is limited. Jesus is in Jerusalem, and we're told that there is a sheep gate. And by the sheep gate, there is a pool called Bethsaida. And there are these five columns around this pool of water. And it's where people gather to seek physical healing in their bodies. It was believed that angels would stir up the waters, and the first one to enter in, the first one into that angel-frothed pool, would be healed physically. Jesus encounters a man who had been ill for 38 years. And Jesus asks him a question that is simple only in Scripture. It's seven words. The question, do you want to be made well? For seven words, it's a complicated question. And it is worth the time, beloved, to ponder. Did the man answer the question? And was he really made well? What was his real limitation? See, it's a complicated question. And if the question were posed to you, do you want to be made well? I wonder what your answer would be. Well, certainly the man did give Jesus a response, but he didn't answer the question. Do you want to be made well? Where was the resounding yes? Rather, he gives this litany of complaint. There's no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, and when I, when I try to get there by myself, someone else always beats me there. And Jesus' response, it's just seven more words. Stand up, take your mat, and walk. And our gospel, or John, tells us that the man was made well. But I wonder, was he really? Now, certainly, Jesus opened the way for this man's body to behave the way that society says a body should behave. The ill man, who had no one and was unable to be the instrument of his own healing, was able to stand up and to walk. But does that mean that he was well? If we read further into the fifth chapter of John's Gospel, this discontent man never says thank you to Jesus. In fact, when confronted for carrying his mat on the Sabbath, When he is confronted by the Jewish authorities, the man promptly blames Jesus. Well, sort of. Because this man didn't even know Jesus' name. Some guy did it. Some guy. And it's not until this man walking, walking with the Jewish authorities, when they see Jesus, he promptly points points him out. That's him. That's the guy who healed me and made me break the rules. It's there in that fifth chapter that the persecution of Jesus begins. And so really, was the ill man made well? And when I think about his real limitation, I don't think that it is his body, which doesn't work the way that he wants it to, that doesn't work the way that society wants it to. I think the real limitation is this man's despair. 
his despondency, his apathy. I'm always struck by how limited and narrow our sense and understanding of perfection is. Anything that falls outside of this narrow view is deemed broken, is deemed imperfect, is deemed in need of healing, and certainly is deemed not made in God's image. And I know, I know that narrowness because I lived a very narrow life until I got sick, which opened for me a real opportunity to be made well. I've been in the place of the man in our gospel, ridden with despair and apathy, frustrated by my lack and frustrated by others' abundance. I have had literal dark nights, angry and confused and furious to no end that I would have a body that doesn't work the way that it's supposed to, a body that doesn't behave, a body that I, I shouldn't have. You know, it's those nights where the most shameful thoughts appear. This kind of body, this kind of body's for someone else. I'm too good, I'm too privileged, too deserving. I mean, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease in seminary. I mean, come on. God, I'm coming to serve you and your people. Shouldn't I have something better than just this? I know healing, and I've experienced healing in my life, and I still have an autoimmune disease that will never go away, and mental health struggles that I will always have to navigate. I'm so grateful for the medication that I have, well, me and my medication buddy, so grateful for that medication. And I'm so grateful for the friends who helped to bring me literally out of that dark night through a blizzard to a doctor to receive treatment. I'm grateful for the tenacity of my siblings and of my dad who helped me to navigate the complexities of our healthcare system and the real actual frustrations of um, like a mail away pharmacy. I'm grateful, I'm grateful for being made well, to have my eyes opened to how perfectly made in God's image I am, even when my body doesn't do what I want it to do. Beloveds, Jesus is asking each and every one of us if we want to be made well. And thankfully, it doesn't require of us cheerfulness or faithfulness or, from our gospel today, even knowledge of who Jesus is. The offer to be made well is for all people. My prayer for you and for me, for all of God's creation, is that we would not trade the gift of being made well for the smallness of the human picture of perfection. You, 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 you are a beloved child of God. And in every stage of life, from infancy to where you find yourself now, in every stage of life, in every body, 
in every mind, in every spirit, you are a reflection of God. You are God's image among us. My prayer for you, and for me, and for all of God's creation, is that we would be able to make space for every image of God among us, where all can know the gift of being made well. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for our bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, especially Joe, our president, Kevin, our governor, and David, our mayor. Be Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. For those in need of healing, Sally Alvarez, Julie Mills, Kathy May, Kathy Bass, Joseph Fletcher, Susan Roller, John Williams, Kenneth Souser, Louis Walter, Judy Todd, and Jim Howard. For the recently departed Colby Dutton, Martha Dooley, James David Woody Woods, and Carolyn Niger, and those we hold in memory today, especially Stu Melcher and Jean Franks. 
for those with special needs, especially the Dooley family, the Master Newton family, Scott Woods, Sue Crumbs, and the Todd family. For the recently departed and those we hold in memory this day, for all affected by the violence in the Ukraine, for Episcopal Relief and Development, and other ecumenical agencies working to respond to the current crisis and for all in dangerous circumstances, especially Jonathan Jensen, Jr. For all impacted by COVID-19, especially our healthcare workers, students and educators, and all in high risk environments. For all impacted by tornadoes and severe weather, especially St. Mark's and the community of Seminole. In the, in the Cathedral Cycle of Prayer, we pray for prayer and spirituality groups. In the Diocesan Cycle of Prayer, we pray for St. James, Antlers, St. Luke's in Idabel, and St. Mark's in Hugo. The congregation is invited to add their own petitions and thanksgivings. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will, and those good things which we dare not, or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. If there's any children who would like to join us, come on down. You do. All right. So, what season are we in? Summer. summer. It's summer. not quite summer. Winter. Oh, I think it's summer. We're approaching summer. I think it's it's spring still for a few more weeks. Spring. So, did you know the church has seasons too? We do. Do you know how we signify or show what season it is? Oh, look at all this. All these colors. So this one has all the colors that we use all throughout the year, and plus some extras because there's blue. So right now. If you look at Dean Katie or up there on the pulpit or over here on the lectern or up there on that chalice, what color is it? What color is it right now? Blue. What color is this? Uh, it's white or gold. It can get, kind of go either way. So right now we are in a time that is leading up to, we are, well, we're past Easter. We're in Lent right now still until and Easter. We're in Easter. Sorry, that was... I'm glad that Dean Katie's sitting up here. So next week, we are going to change to that. Why do you think we're doing that? Is it Christmas? Yeah. No, it's not Christmas. It's way past. So it would make sense that we use this for Christmas, but we don't. The only time we use this red is during Pentecost, which is next Sunday, and we use it during Holy Week, and we use it for ordinations and what else, Dean Katie? Feast, feast, feast Days of Martyrs. Y'all want to go down that road? That yes. sounds like a fun one to go down. 
<laughs> and after that, you'll see this. What color is this? Green. Green. You will see this for so long, you'll be tired of looking at it, likely. It's what we use during, my goodness, this is a long, this must be a deacon one. Uh, we use this during ordinary times. So that's what we use next. So what do you think we use? Uh-oh. Purple. Purple. Why do you think we use purple? Have you ever noticed what seasons? It's what? It's cool. That is right. It is a cool color. So purple we use. It's Jesus' color. Well, that's pretty good. Where'd you come up with that? Oh, very good. This is what we use when we get ready for Easter or Lent. During Lent, we use it. Or leading up to Christmas. Now, pink. That is a color comp. What, what would we use pink for? Anyone have an idea? Valentine's Day. Yeah. Ah. We only use this twice a year. And Dean Katie's going to tell us those names. What do we use this for? Gaudete Sunday. Gaudete Sunday. And So this mean, pink means joy. So what is, we said we were entering summer, right? So that's a new season for us. So let's pray real quick about our next season. Dear God, thank you for the gift of your liturgical calendar and for our own new seasons like summer. Help us to make great memories over this summer with our families and to always be thankful for every moment we have with you. Amen.
the St. Paul softball team was really the only reason I wanted to come be your dean. Um, just kidding. I'm really not good enough to be that competitive. So, But I'm really looking forward to the opportunity to gather with, the, with Ep Episcopalians across the metro and enjoy some fun together. On Thursday at 7 p.m., and I was curious if George was going to say that purple was Jesus' color because in our ascension window, Jesus is wearing purple. And that window, I have heard from so many of you, is a source of great comfort, of great uh, peace. And that is Jesus ascending into heaven, what we will be celebrating on Thursday, one of the major feasts of our liturgical calendar. So you should come. You can see what color vestments we'll be wearing, and you can uh, partake in this beautiful service of Ascension Day. With that, I encourage you to keep reading um, your announcement sheet, the cathedral's website, and of course our social media pages, where you can learn all about the discounts available to you at the bookstore, our outreach needs for the Infant Crisis Center, for uh, an opportunity to submit names for those who have served in our armed forces that we will be uh, remembering this coming weekend on Memorial Day and so much more. Beloved, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God.
up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify, glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and the source of all goodness, you made all things and you filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. And joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and we glorify your name as we sing. reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death. And rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit to be his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come, for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper, with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. He said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, and awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts that you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you, and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we praise you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts.
sanctifying them and showing them to be the holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and this cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ, and reveal it to unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, matriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. of God for the people of God, take them and remember that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
someone who's going to come and be our Eucharistic visitor out into our community. Lucy, come. Lucy, who are you going to see? Ralph and Mary Nell. The Buckmasters. And Julie Mills. Let us send you forth. We send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we all share one bread, one cup. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. And now this Easter blessing, the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.